everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Winterberry Beanie and uh, this beanie is the first hat in the Wonderful Hats Crochet Along that I'm hosting on my blog over at richtexturescrochet.com. So if you're here for that, welcome. Uh, if you've just found this beanie and uh, are really excited about it, welcome as well and I encourage you to take a look at the rest of the hats. Uh, and uh, and this crochet along. It's a lot of fun. So today we're learning how to crochet the winter berry beanie which you can see here in the photo. There's also more photos on my blog and then I have my sample one that I've made. I'm just gonna back out here a little bit. Um, so this is it here. It is made with the ever popular Suzette stitch and uh, it's a fairly easy beanie to work. I've worked it here in two colors. You're welcome to switch them up as you see fit. For this pattern today, you're going to need two colors and about 100 yards of each color of a worsted weight yarn. I'm using the Woolies yarn by Lion Brand, uh, which is a worsted weight and it is an acrylic and wool blend which I absolutely love. So I'm going to be using my color A which is the Canyon Sunset color here and then color B is the Fisherman White. So you'll need about 100 yards of each, possibly a little bit extra if you decide to make your own pom-pom for the top as I did. All of the beanies, including this one today, look great without a pom on top, so it is optional for the pattern. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and links to all of these items are in the description of the video. Also in the description of the video, you will find a direct link to the free written pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Before we begin, just a quick note about this pattern, this uh, beanie, along with all of the other beanies in this crochet along is worked from the bottom. So down here at the brim, up through to the top and uh, all of the beanies are worked in this way and also another thing if you're working on the crochet along all of the beanies the brim and that first round uh, are all worked the same way so if you like to work ahead and would like to work all your bean uh, brims at one time you're welcome to do so Thank you for joining me and uh, while you're here, I invite you to subscribe and again, check out some of the other beanie patterns here on my channel. To begin our hat, we're working in the brim and the brim of the hat is worked in rows. So we're going to start by working our slip knot and then by making our foundation chain. Our foundation chain is going to uh, be a total of 10 chains. Once you have worked your 10 chains, you're ready to begin row one. For row one, you're going to work a slip stitch into that second chain from your hook and then into each chain all the way across. Now, if you are not a fan of the slip stitch brim, you can substitute these slip stitches for either a single crochet or half double crochet. I like the slip stitch brim because it holds its shape quite well, although it is a little bit longer to work. So you're going to begin this first row by slip stitching in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you're going to have a total of nine slip stitches. Once you've worked your final stitch, chain one and turn your work. For row two, you're going to work in the back loop only. To find your back loop, you're going to take a look at the top of your stitch as I am here. And your back loop is that horizontal bar that's the furthest away from you. So you're going to be working under that bar only. Insert your hook and you're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. So working in the back loop only, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. Okay. 
at the end of your row, chain one and turn your work. You're now going to continue repeating that row two. So working in the back loop only, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. And you're going to repeat that row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately 16 to 17 inches. Now I will, once I get to the body of the hat, give you the stitch multiple so that if you wanted to change the size of your hat, you can. So if you would like to work a longer or shorter brim, you are welcome to do that. But for my hat today, I'm going to work approximately 16 to 17 inches, which uh, fits a, uh, a woman's head. So go ahead, continue, and then meet me back here once you've completed your brim. Once you've worked your brim to 16 or 17 inches, uh, and that's without a stretch. Once you stretch it, it's going to uh, be a lot longer. So work it to 17 or si 16 or 17 inches. You're then going to fold your brim over as I have here so that the two shorter ends meet. And you'll want to uh, seam these together. So what I do is chain one and then slip stitching, working in the back loop only of that piece that's closest to me and then into the back loop only of the piece that's farthest away from me so I'm working through both thicknesses you're going to slip stitch all the way across so pick up the back loop only of both pieces and slip stitch you're going to have again a total of nine slip stitches. Make sure you don't miss any on an either side of your brim. Once you come to the end here as I have. You can chain one and you're going to turn your brim so that it's right side out. So your seamed piece is on the inside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work in rounds around this long edge of the brim. You've chained one and you're going to work 72 single crochet stitches all the way around. Now I have my odd tail here from my brim. I'm just going to crochet over top of it and then I can snip it off. But you're going to work 70, 72 single crochet stitches around your brim. Now there's no clear places of where to place your hook. So you're going to just want to do your best to work it evenly around. If you uh, find it easier, you can take a stitch marker and mark the halfway point around your brim and then work half the stitches on one side, half on the other. It's really up to you. But you'll just want to work the 72 single crochet stitches around. Now if you would like to change the size of your hat, in this single crochet round, you're going to want to change it by multiples of two. So you'll just need multiples of two of single crochet around this first round of your hat. So go ahead, complete this first round and meet me back here. Once you've worked 72 single crochet all the way around, you're going to come to that first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch do not turn your work. For round two, chain one and into this first stitch, so the same stitch is joining, work one single crochet and a double crochet all into the same stitch. Skip the next stitch, into the next stitch, work a single crochet and a double crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Skip the next stitch into the next, then single crochet and double crochet. Skip one stitch 
and into the next single crochet and double crochet. Repeat it all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round two, join, you'll skip that last stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn your work. For round three, you're going to begin by working a single crochet and double crochet into the same stitch as joining. So just into that first same stitch, single crochet, followed by a double crochet. Skip the next double crochet stitch and into the next single crochet, work one single crochet and double crochet. Repeat that all the way around, skip the next double crochet, into the next single crochet, single crochet, and double crochet. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round three, you will skip that final double crochet and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one and turn your work. Now round four is worked uh, pretty much the same as round three. So into this first stitch, your single crochet, you're going to work one single crochet followed by one double crochet skip the next double crochet stitch and into the next single crochet, work a single crochet and double crochet. Repeat that all the way around. The difference at the end of round four is that we are going to switch over to our color B in the final stitch. So when you come around to the end, I will show you how I like to change colors uh, in the middle of a project. So go ahead, repeat. Uh, what you did in round three, all the way around, switching to color B in your final stitch. Now at the end of round four, when you come around, uh, as I mentioned, you'll want to switch to your color B in the final stitch. So to switch to my color B, what I like to do is, uh, for my final stitch, it's a double crochet, I'm going to yarn over with my color A, insert my hook into that same stitch, yarn over and drop a, a loop, then yarn over and pull through two loops. That's all with my color A. Then drop your color A, pick up your color B, and place it on your hook and pull through. You're now ready to continue on using your color B in your project. So at the end of that round, you can then go ahead with using your color B, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Then as this instructions indicate, chain one and turn your work. Now when I'm working this next round, I'm going to work over top of these threads here in the back so that it makes it a little bit easier uh, when I come to trim them and when it comes to finishing off and weaving in all those ends. Now for rounds five through to 11, using your color B, you're going to repeat that row three. So into that first stitch right down here, you're going to work a single crochet followed by a double crochet into the same stitch skip the next double crochet stitch and into that single crochet, work a single crochet and double crochet. Repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch and then chain one and turn your work. You're going to do that for rounds five through to 11. At the end of round 11, switch back to your color A 
and meet me back here. Once you come to the end of round 11, you will have worked uh, seven rounds in your color B of that Suzette stitch. And this is what your beanie will look like. You will, uh, at the end of round 11, have joined back to your color A. You can then chain one and turn your work. Next, for rounds 12 through to 14, so for three more rounds, you're going to once again repeat that round three using your color A, single crochet in that first stitch followed by double crochet. Skip the next double crochet into the next single crochet, work a single crochet followed by double crochet. Continue that all the way around, join with the slip stitch in your first stitch and then repeat. So you're going to now work with your color A three more rounds of round three and then meet me back here. The end of round 14 uh, brings you to the end of the body of your hat and now we're now ready to start the decrease. So this is what you should have so far for your hat and we're now going to close it up at the top. For round 15 you can begin by chaining one. At the end of round 14 there was no need to turn your work. So for round 15 chain one. Begin by working a half double crochet in each of the next uh, six stitches. So starting with the same as you're joining, half double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then half double crochet two together over the next two stitches. To work your half double crochet two together, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all four. That's your half double crochet two together. We're now going to repeat by working a half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. Followed by a half double crochet two together into the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Chain one and there is no need to turn your work. At the end of round 15, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Chain one, do not turn your work. For round 16, half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So beginning with that uh, same stitches joining, there's one, two, three, four, and five, and then half double crochet two stitches together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, half double crochet, into each of the next five stitches. And then half double crochet two together. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. For round 17, chain one, do not turn your work half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And 
and then half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. and half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 18, chain one, do not turn your work. Half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And half double crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat that all the way around, half double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and half double crochet two stitches together, and then join with a slip stitch in the first stitch, chain one, do not turn your work. For round 19, chain one, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and then half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around, half double crochet in each of the next two stitches, followed by a half double crochet two together, and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 20, half double crochet into the next stitch, followed by a half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around, half double crochet into the next stitch, and half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat it all the way around, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch, chain one, and do not turn your work. At the end of round 20, you've joined with a slip stitch in that first stitch, you've chained one. For round 21, it's your final round. You're simply going to half double crochet two together uh, over each of the next two stitches all the way around. Once you have completed this round, you can then fasten off leaving a long tail. And I'll show you how I closed the top of my hat here uh, when I come around. So half double crochet two stitches together all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch and then fasten off, as I mentioned, leaving a fairly long tail. Just like so. You can then take a yarn needle and you're going to sew the top of your hat closed. Now to sew the top of my hat closed, what I did was I turned my hat inside out so that any seam would only show on the inside. Taking my yarn needle, I simply wove in and out through the tops of my stitches all the way around that circular opening there. Once you come all the way around, pull tight and I'll pull the top of your hat closed. It's up to you. I like to leave a little bit of a knot just to make sure that it's secure. Weave in your ends and then fasten off. 
If you would like at this time, you can uh, make yourself a pom-pom if you'd like. I have one here. Just a little tip for attaching your pom-poms, especially if they're handmade and uh, they can't go in the wash. I leave two long tails. I attach it to the top and when I attach it, I attach it with a simple bow so that I can untie it and remove it in case the hat needs to be washed at a later date. So that's all there is to uh, making your winter berry beanie. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, later on for more great patterns. And if you're working on the Wonderful Hats crochet along, I'll see you again next week. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.